Well, I want to thank my colleague uh, from California for having this special honor and talking about uh, the hurricane damage and what needs to be done in the future. I, uh, I have to say that the damage to uh, my district was catastrophic. Uh, we had many towns uh, where initially at least it looked like uh, the majority of the homes and businesses were wiped out. Now, on, when we go back and look again, you know, some of them can be saved, but we're, we're talking about the thousands of people who lost their homes and many others who lost their businesses and it really created a, a humanitarian crisis uh, in that first week or so uh, because we were trying to get FEMA in with the disaster recovery centers and with the Red Cross and the Salvation Army and really over the first week the main concern was just humanitarian trying to find mm -hmm. shelter for people trying to make sure they had food and water and and clothes but I have to say the, the response uh, was overwhelming. Uh, so many of the, of the towns um, in my district, uh, basically it was a voluntary effort because in the first few days uh, it was pretty much the people locally that were doing all those things. And uh, towns had shelters set up, people were bringing in food, making hot meals. Um, I never saw such an outpouring of uh, you know, uh, of support, if you will, and it continues. Uh, uh, this weekend, uh, we by by this weekend, this last weekend, there were disaster recovery centers set up by FEMA in many of the towns. Uh, you know, particularly those that were hardest hit. And I have to say that uh, locally, FEMA did a very good job. The people that came out and set up the disaster recovery centers or or helped with the humanitarian needs were just uh, they really were they really were excellent. But I, I wanted to talk today a little bit, if I could, not that the humanitarian concerns ha have disappeared, because they haven't, I don't want to suggest that, um, but um, I wanted to talk a little more about uh, long-term needs, if I could, and just take a little bit of your time. Uh, we met um, with the FEMA director uh, this morning, and I talked essentially about four uh, needs that are, you know, that we really need to address. One was uh, what I call temporary housing. In other words, I want people to get out of the shelters and either be able to go back to their homes or um, some kind of temporary uh, housing that would last them for, you know, a year or 18 months. And uh, we set up, uh, has, I, th I think it should open by this weekend at Fort Monmouth, which is one of the military bases that was closed under BRAC. Uh, but we've identified at least 600 um, units, I believe now, where we can put people temporarily uh, who've lost their homes and can't go back to their home. But I talked to FEMA today, to the director today, about uh, trying to get uh, trailers in. Uh, and he said that that was going to happen, but it hasn't happened yet because many of the people uh, right now are still living in a house um, that has no power and is not functional. Uh, but because it's not terribly cold or hasn't been, uh, they're able to stay there. Once uh, it gets cold, they won't be able to, and they'll have to go back to a shelter. And we want people to get out of these shelters. So I'm hoping that not only uh, are we going to have some housing at uh, Fort Monmouth, but we can also supplement that and get some trailers in from FEMA that could actually be put in place on people's own property so they don't have to go uh, to a, uh, you know, to Fort Monmouth or elsewhere over the next year or 18 months. This is sort of the second stage, you know, out of the shelter into some temporary housing for a year or 18 months and then, of course, back to your own house once it's repaired or rebuilt. Um, and then the second thing is that we have a lot of, uh, I think you were getting at it before, we have a lot of the beach replenishment and the dunes and the seawalls that were being used as protection. Uh, many of my, some of my towns are actually below sea level and if it isn't for the the, um, the seawall or the dunes or the beach replenishment, artificial beach replenishment that puts in place, the storm would have been even worse. Um, and now those are gone. I mean not completely but a town like Keensburg, New Jersey, the dune is gone. Um, in many of the towns along the Atlantic coast, the um, the slope of the beach has gone down six or seven feet, so they don't have any protection anymore. Uh, sea walls have been broken up. So uh, I asked the Corps and FEMA today, the FEMA director, to give the Corps the go-ahead to do emergency work because right now in Kingsburg, for example, if you have another storm, not even a hurricane, since the dune's not there, the water will come right in and you'd have the same problem again. 
So we, we got a positive response on that, but we need to find out when this is going to happen, when this is going to begin. And then the third thing is the match. I have a lot of very small towns. Some of my towns have 1,000 people, 2,000 people. And when you talk about long-term uh, work on infrastructure, municipal or state infrastructure, um, there's a 25% match. So we're trying to get that either reduced or eliminated because the towns can't afford that. And the last thing is many people have asked, because as I'm sure we're going to have a debate, I have no doubt that, this, that these more severe and frequent storms are a consequence of, of global climate change. And we, you know, I'm, I've been uh, around 60 years and I've never seen a storm like this. Nobody has. They say it's the 500-year storm. Well, I, I'm afraid that the, my colleagues that the 500-year storm is now the 10-year storm. You know, and the nor'easter that we would get every 20 years is going to happen every year. I mean, I hope not, but it certainly seems that way. And so, you know, we have to look at, in some cases, buyouts. In other words, people have said, look, I, we can't do this every two or three years. And so can we have the government buy our home? Uh, or what's, there's no home, but what's left of it rather than rebuild. And um, many areas where if the homes could be lifted and put on a, a, a platform or, um, or piling, uh, then maybe they could stay because the water would rush underneath. Um, so these are, this is, was also, I also brought this up with the FEMA director said, and he said that there are programs at the federal level that would accomplish that. So we're now looking, I, I'm not taken away from the humanitarian problem that still exists, it definitely does. Um, but um, we have to look at some of these uh, issues in terms of housing, uh, rebuilding, um, and, uh, and changes in the way we build um, over the long term. And I know that you know, all of you and all of our colleagues, hopefully on a bipartisan basis, will be supportive of trying to get funding for all these things. Uh, the FEMA director said that for all emergency purposes, there's adequate funding at least until the spring. But when we talk about some of these long-term things, undoubtedly there will have to be uh, some kind of appropriation that we're going to have to pass here. And, and I, I, I hope and I, you know, I pray that um, we're all going to work together to accomplish that. So thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Pallone.